Have you ever played a chord and said to yourself, man, I hate this chord. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The other day, I asked you on Twitter, a website that totally doesn't bring out the worst in people and make me lose faith in humanity, what is the worst guitar chord and why? I gotta say, there were a number of pretty awful submissions, which I guess in this case are pretty good submissions. So today, I'm gonna do my best to show you how you can make the worst guitar chords sound great. But before we get to it, I'll quickly let you know that today is the last day of the half off back to school sale going on at my course platform, samurayguitartheory.com. Over there are four courses that teach the system I use for making music from the ground up. In my courses, The Rudiments, and Beyond the Basics, I teach music theory for the guitarist, starting at the beginning, working up to more advanced topics. Pentatonic Mastery is a short course focused on everyone's favorite five note scale. And in my newest course, The Craft of Soloing, I'll show you how to take your solos to the next level by thinking in completely new ways. Today's the last day that everything is half off with promo code back to school 21. It'll be a while before I do another sale like this one. So get them while the getting's good. You can find more at samurayguitar3.com. I'll also put up links in the description. Anyways, let's get to those awful chords. To kick things off today is my friend and fellow YouTube guitar dad, Paul Davids, who says that this chord is his least favorite chord. He says it just lacks everything. It's not rich, no punch, no color. Four E's in one chord is just too much. Can't stand it. Please don't feature it in a video. It's horrible. Sorry, Paul, I will clearly not be obliging your request. Let's check out this chord. It's basically an E power chord with some open strings added to it. You have an E, an E, a B, an E, a B, and another E otherwise known as the EBB chord. One of Paul's issues with this chord is the fact that it has four E's in it. Well, guess what, Paul? If I play it with my 12 string, it now has eight E's. I actually don't care for this chord a whole lot either. It's only got two different notes in it and lacks any real harmonic depth. However, one way that I might think to use it is keep that chord shape and move it around in a key while letting the open strings ring out. So if I'm thinking in terms of E major, I start with that chord and then I move that same shape down here, giving me an A chord, move up to the C sharp minor position. And then I'll add a little bit of sauce here before going to the B. And then before everything repeats all over again, I'll add a little bit more sauce. And now we hear that ugly soulless E as part of a bigger pattern instead of sitting by its boring, friendless, pathetic self. Here's how one might use this progression in a musical setting. Alan Grimm shared this picture, which looks like it originally came from a YouTube channel called Todd Poor One. My God, this <laughs> is a monstrosity. If I were to seriously try to dissect this chord, I would say that the thumb is mashing up a root on the E string. From there, the index finger, I guess, is on the A string. It's a toss up which note that might be. Um, I'll go with this one. And then from there, it looks like the pinky is on the flat seven and the ring would be on the third again. And the middle finger is working very hard, doing a whole lot of nothing because that note wouldn't even ring out. All in all, that will give us a dominant seven chord without the fifth, root, third, flat seven, third again. There's this old timey jazz guitarist named Freddie Green who would take shapes like this and move them around the neck when he played rhythm. So here's a progression, only using this shape moved around the neck. Next up, user Eloy expresses some rather strong anti-diminished chordism in his tweet. Hmm. Let me counter that by giving you a Sammy G hot take. 
The diminished chord is the most powerful of all chords besides the power chord. Now you probably wouldn't want to sit on a diminished seven chord for an elongated period of time, but when used as transition chords, they can be very useful. Imagine that diminished chords were hockey players, then they would be the playmaker who gets a ton of assists. They're never gonna get the same recognition or glory as the goal scorer, but they're equally as important. Here is a quick breakdown of diminished chord theory. One of the key components of music is creating tension and release. The most common chord used to create tension is the dominant seven chord, which usually resolves down the musical spacing of a perfect fifth. Or less commonly down a half step interval. The wonderful thing about diminished chords is they create tension, but they resolve down a step, up a half step, up a major third, or down a perfect fourth. So if you're trying to create that traditional sense of tension and release, the diminished chord can open up a lot of new options for you and get you to places you would normally have trouble getting to. And really, I'm just scratching the surface of what this chord could do. I could probably dedicate an entire video to it because it would be nice to squash any anti-diminished chordism out there. But until then, here's a chord progression that goes a little bit overboard with the diminishedness. Jeff Giraffe says that, in their opinion, the worst chord is the 404040, which would sound like this. Yeah, that will be a tough one to use musically, but fear not, there is a way. If you took the notes on this chord and arrange them so that they're in order, you would have D sharp, E, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. The minor second interval is extremely dissonant, and using it in a chord requires some strategy Deaf Giraffe's chord has four minor second intervals, which is why it sounds so grating. But check this out. Say I took the chord and moved all the fretted notes up a fret. I get this nice A minor shape with some open strings. And alternatively, say I took my notes and moved them down a fret, I would get this nice G minor shape. I like both these new chords, so what I can do is take what we'll call Deaf Giraffe's passing chord and put it between them. So I could play an A minor play the passing chord, which creates tension, which releases nicely to the G minor chord. I can use this as part of a longer progression, play it through a spinning speaker, slap a guitar solo over top of it, and boom, dollar store Pink Floyd. Moving on, a surprising number of people really don't like the open D chord. I personally have never felt a lot of angst towards this good old campfire chord, but I can see where people are coming from. All the other open chords use five or six strings. So a G for example, all six strings, C, five strings, whereas a D only uses four strings, which makes it sound less oomphy. And yes, oomphy is the technical musical term for this, at least it is as of now. One of my favorite tricks to oomph up my D chord is to take the low E string and tune it down to a D. And there you have one big juicy D. Another thing that I'll often do when I start messing around with this tuning is take my A down to a G 
And now if the song goes to the four chord, I have another open string to work with. Let's cue up a swampy backing track and put this tuning to the test. And last for today, a user named Angel says that the worst chord is the periphery chord or whatever Mark Periphery calls this one. Worst chord to play if you have short fingers. Well, my fingers are quite short, so this should be interesting. So here's what this chord sounds like. That's what it's supposed to sound like. I'm not sure what song this is from, so I can't check to see if I'm playing the chord wrong. If I am, let me know, and let me know what song this is, because I would like to hear it in context. But if I am right, this chord is a dominant seven sus chord with both the four and the two in it. You could use this in place of a two minor, six minor, or five chord in a diatonic setting. And I should clarify, you could do this. I can't do anything with it, unless my hands go through a pretty major growth spurt, which I think is pretty unlikely at age 33. But I do have a tool that's gonna to help me out here, the Cordonero Capo, which unlike a normal capo, which would just bar down one fret, I can use these arms here to press down any frets that I'd like. And now I've got it set so that my Cordonero is pressing down on the periphery chord. From there, I'll play notes around it and create a Midwest emo type thing. And I should let you know that I don't really know what Midwestern emo is. It's just that whenever I do this type of thing, I always see that term pop up. So if I'm using the name wrong, let's not worry about it. It's just a name. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Those are the worst chords, according to you guys, and how you can go about making them sound great. If you wanna get involved next time I do a video like this one, make sure you follow me over on the Bird app. And remember that today is the very last day where everything over my lesson platform is 50% off. If you really wanna understand why music works the way it does, head over to samurai-guitar3.com and use promo code BACKTOSCHOOL21. Don't miss out, it will probably be quite a while before I do another sale like this. If you wanna check out another video like this one, hit that link up there. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button, leave a comment, any of that good stuff. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and stay tuned for a wide range of musical content. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet. I'm Samurai Guitarist, I'll see you again soon.